Um, and really, as what Pastor Tori was sharing, it, it leads into uh, what I'm speaking about today. And I love when God does that, because we haven't really talked over details of, uh, of what God has this morning uh, for me to share. But I believe I'm going to call this message, it should be called Proving Grounds. Proving Grounds. In James 1, starting in verse 2, it says, My brother, and count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. And here in, in James, it's, uh, you know, he's, he's sharing with us this, <laughs> this understanding that, that we will fall into various trials, various things that happen that, that we're not going to be able ju- to just go through life and, and not have Hard things happen. And it seems a little strange sometimes if you think about it, like, like why do I have to, or or how does this help me? You know, it's it's like I, you know, it's it's not like when you put yourself in a place of weight or of pressure, you know, like working out or learning, growing in some way. It's, it's, this is not what he's talking about here. But what he does is he tells us that, that actually even, I would say even more than those times whenever we put ourselves in the place to learn, to grow, to, you know, be strengthened, that, that we actually put that weight on us on ourselves, that even more so when we come into unsuspectedly or, or even the testing, the trial, the, the thing that's happening around us or even to us, to our family, that that could be a point or a time when even more so than when we try to, that we grow, that we are made complete, that our faith is, is tested and, and proven to be what it should be. And that's really what I want to share today, what I want to talk about. And I know I've said this before, but, you know, I'm a little bit weird. And sometimes I get excited when things are like a mess or wrong or like, oh my God, you know, somebody might be like, I can't believe this is happening. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited, you know, like, and they're like, what is wrong with you? <clears throat> and we're not necessarily all like that, and I, don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't get to places sometimes where I, I, I can get into the, the mode of, of being afraid or having some kind of anxiety about something happening. That does, that can happen, that does happen, and, but I don't know. I, f- I feel that I've somehow come to this place where, I, where I'm almost like, God, it's going to happen. So what are you going to be able to do? You know, like, how are you going to work in this around me or through me and or in me to do something that is going to create in me or to let somebody else see who you are. 
And having that mindset going into something just changes your whole perspective about what you're going through. So James, when he is speaking here, he, he, he basically says that trials or these things are inevitable. In verse 2, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. He doesn't say if, he says when. Count it all joy when you fall into it, because you're going to have that happen. So just be ready. Be ready for when it happens. This word count, it, it actually means to consider what we would think it means, to consider, to deem, um, or account, or think. So think about this, or deem this situation a joy. Think about it as a joy, or consider it to be a joy, right, when you fall into these various trials. Well, also this word, and I, I, this is so interesting, interesting to me, that this word actually also means to lead, to go before, to be a leader, to rule or command. It's a word used, spoken of, of those that are a commander, a ruler, So I, and then I'm like thinking about this, and I'm like, oh, wait, a not only is, he, is, is this kind of speaking to us, to think about this whenever you go through this trial or this thing that might be hard or heavy, not only think about it or, or deem it to be a joy, but can we even take that, and, and, and when we speak this scripture and say, Lead yourself with joy or be led by joy. Not that it's like us doing it, but like be led or be ruled by joy. Not just think about it as a joy when you come into this moment, but, but can we be led by joy? Can, can we be ruled by joy? Can we allow joy, right, part of these, to 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 go before, to be a leader. See, can, can we allow joy to go before us into this trial? I don't know if you guys get that. I, I think this changes everything. Consider it a joy. Allow joy to go before you. Allow joy to lead you when you fall into this trial. And this word trial means it's, a, it's an experiment or an attempt, trial, or it says approving, approving. And again, the, it, there's, there's really multiple ways we can take something or walk through something, right? God wants us to, to walk through situations or even just live our lives trusting Him in faith, believing in who He is, not believing in ourself, you know, thinking of how great I am or how I can do this, but how can God do this? How strong is He that He could help me in, no matter, in, in whatever situation that I am in, you know, so all of a sudden we take our perspective in, in off of ourselves and on to God, and it takes our perspective off of what's going on and how I can get through it to on God and seeing who He is, and no matter what the thing is, we know that God is strong, and we know that He has victory. He already has victory. He's already won. It says, count it all joy when you fall into when you're going to have these things happen, but when you fall into these various trials. It says proving, proving grounds. You guys know what proving grounds are? I mean, they can, this word, this, this phrase is used maybe about military proving grounds, about auto proving grounds. 
Um, I don't know so much about military proving grounds, but I've watched lots of stuff, as you guys kind of know, that I like cars and stuff like that. And you watch these videos, and so my, my sons and daughters actually like cars too, and, you know, we're always watching videos of motorcycles and cars and all these things. And so auto manufacturers have proving grounds. And what is a proving ground? Whenever something is made, they have to test it or have it go through these trials, right? That's what the scripture says, these trials, these tests. Count all joy when you go through these things. But when something is made, they, they take it to these proving grounds. Let's say it's a car. Because they want to know that it's going to be able to do what it was created to do. So they take this car out as some kind of course. You know, sometimes it's like giant um, speed bumps or, you know, this. You know what? Have you guys ever seen the videos? <laughs> they, they take these cars and they're driving fast and somehow, I don't know exactly how it works, but they're like shooting water on the side of it to see what happens, you know, when a car, like, gets hit by this water and it shoots it sideways and some cars just like, Pew, you know, and other cars, they, they have tested and, and created them in such a way that they, like, it gets knocked a little bit off course, a little bit to the side, but it's able to correct and, and stay stable even though it was hit from the side with this powerful force so that it can continue on to go where it was supposed to go. And in this scripture, I believe this is what James is speaking of, not about those cars, but about us. And him saying, count it all joy, esteem it, deem it to be, or be led by joy, when you come into this proving ground, this place where it may feel like you're hit from the side, just blasted by something that, that has, has seemingly come to try to knock you off the course that you're supposed to go, consider that. Consider that to be it a joy, or something that is helpful because God is with you, because he has created you for this. When he says this, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And in verse 3, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Knowing that the test of your faith produces patience. Now it doesn't say that somehow this trial is going to produce faith. And we have to understand this. We have to see this. What it says it's going to produce patience when our faith is tested, but we have to have the faith before the test or the proving grounds. And God has created us he has created us to, to live in a place of faith and trust in Him. To trust that He is with you. To trust that He will provide. To trust that, that He has the strength that each and every one of us need to move forward. Not just in a proving ground or a trial, but every single day. That He's the reason that we can get up. He's the air that we breathe. He's the strength in our legs. 
is the air in our lungs, right? It's, it's Him. That we have that faith. But then when, when we come into this place that there's a proving ground, that there's a, a moment that when that faith, faith is there, that that moment of trial or proving would show that our faith is there, but also it would show and prove that it is working and that God is good. And in that moment, it says that our faith produces patience. Hmm. See, trials, trials reveal they reveal the faith that we do have, not create faith. They reveal faith. And this, this isn't because God, you, you know, doesn't know how much faith we have and he's wanting to figure it out because that's not God. But really in these moments, it's for us, right? When God allows things when he does things in us or for us or even allows things to happen to come into these moments he does it for our good and for others so in this moment it's not so he can figure out how much faith we have it's so that we can understand and be brought to the place of trust and seeing the faith that we do have if we can stand in it if we can be firm on that foundation of faith that we have in God, and also so that people can see who He is, so that those around us can see who He is, and that no matter what happens when we trust Him and have faith and believe, that we can go through the proving ground, we can hit, be hit from the side with that blast, and it may make us go, Whoa, you know, but we are firmly planted and continuing in the place that we should go. And this, this word patience, right? It says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. This word patience means steadfastness, constancy, or endurance. See, this, this word doesn't, it, it doesn't describe this, this passive waiting like we think patience is, right? You know, when I speak to my kids and say, have, just please be patient. When I think about myself, oh, I need, I need some patience. That it, it's that I'm just able to be calm in this moment and not get too worried or want something to happen too fast. And that's mostly the way that, that we think about patience. But this word, patience, and as it's used here in the scripture, and it says that it produces, that our faith in this moment produces patience, it means that it produces endurance. It's, it's not like a waiting around for, you know, your kids to get ready when you've already told them when you're going to leave and to be ready before that time, you know, it's not that kind of a patience. It's a patience that says, I can endure through this moment that I'm in. It's a patience like, like training for a marathon, having the endurance to run and finish a race. That's what this patience is. Faith in this moment produces an endurance to finish the race. This, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this word, and I don't want to say the word because I know I'm going to mess it up so bad, but it's made from, it's got these two uh, root words which is hupo, meaning under, and meno, 
which means to stay or abide or remain. So in this word, this word patience, right, that, that definition to, to be endurance or to be able to endure, to finish the race, these two root words means to be able to stay, to abide under the weight of what is happening. See, when you're working out, I, you can ask somebody else because I don't really know that much about it. But you, in order to build muscle, you have to remain under the weight. The weight has to be placed so that you are, are pushing against it. And that force is coming down and you are pushing against it in order to build the muscle. And this is the same thing. Is saying this, this patience, this, this endurance is a being able to remain under the weight, getting stronger, producing something in us so that we will be able to not, will be able to finish the race and, and not have to give up. That's what patience is. Verse 4, 2 Corinthians 1, 4, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. This word perfect, I've studied this actually quite a bit and it's used in different places in the Bible that, that to me I felt like I had to learn about the word in order to really understand what they were saying. Right when it says God's good and acceptable and perfect will is not three different wills God has for you. And you can choose one of the three. One's going to be the best. One's going to be not as good. One's going to be kind of in the middle. That's not what it means. It means what is the will that he, is, he has placed before you, that he has for you, and what would be pleasing to him, that will that you walk in it in perfect, being finished, being in the will, walking in it, being pleasing to him, and also being brought to its finish or completed. That's what that scripture means. That's not even part of my notes. I'm just going to give you a little extra there. But in this scripture, when it says, but let patience have it, and it uses it a couple of times, let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, not that you're going to be so awesome, you're going to be so, you know, shiny and, you know, it means brought to its end, finished, wanting nothing necessary to completeness and mature. That's what this word perfect means. And this word complete means complete in all its parts, in no part wanting or unsound, complete, entire, or it means whole of a body without blemish or defect, whether of a priest or of a victim. So he's speaking to us and he says, but let patience, so let this endurance through this proving ground produce in us its perfect work, its work that comes to its completion, its work that, that, that comes to all that it's supposed to be. Let it be finished. Let this endurance work in you so that the work that God wants to do in you and through you be brought to its end and finished and complete. Say it this way, but let endurance be brought to its end and finished so you can be at the place where you are mature, wanting nothing and complete, whole in all parts and lacking nothing. When I, when I read that one small little verse, if you take that definition and pull all that in there, that's what it means. But let endurance, so 
when we come into this proving ground, it, it comes and it excites and it proves, it, it, it raises up our faith, which then leads to a growing of endurance that we can finish the race, that we can run the marathon. And it says, then let that endurance, that endurance can be brought to its end and finished so that we be in a place where we're mature and where we're wanting nothing, lacking nothing. And now whenever I read this like this, I, I, I don't know about you, it, but I'm almost like, man, I, I don't want to not go through things. You guys are like, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Think about it again, the proving grounds for cars. Do you, want to, do you want to drive a car that somebody is like, yeah, hey, I think I'm going to throw this on there and this on there and this on there. Here you go. You want to buy it? And nobody's ever driven it before. They don't even know if the parts work. They don't know if the suspension's good. It might last a day, it might last a year. We're not really sure because it hasn't been tested. Nothing's really been proven on this car, but we're going to go ahead and sell it. Any, do you, anybody, anybody want that? I, I, don't, I don't think that I do. I don't want to get in a car like that and drive it around, drive my kids around in this car, knowing that any moment it might fall apart. But then when it comes to us, when it comes to, oh, oh well, I don't, I don't want to go to the proving grounds. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go to the place where, where I am able to understand more how faith works and how much that I have and how I can make it through this so that I can make it to the end of the race. I don't really want that for me. Cool. But then you're bringing your kids into that place too. You, you, you may, right? Somebody may want to drive that car by themselves, but then when you say you're bringing your kids into that, you're bringing your family into that, you're bringing your friends into that. I want, I, I want us to be at a place where whoever is brought into our sphere of influence, where whoever is brought into any kind of moment around us, with us, that we have an understanding and knowing that we're going to get there. We're going to make it through. I've already been to the other proving grounds. Oh, man, this proving grounds is nothing because I've already been through the other proving grounds. I know who God is. I know what he can do. This is nothing. In verse 5 and 6, it says, James 1, 5 and 6, If anyone, any of you, lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives it liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Ask for wisdom, it says. Look, it says, we will, we will fall into these trials, these tests. We will come to these proving grounds that, that show our faith and, and produce endurance in us. And straight after that, it goes into, if anybody lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives it liberally without reproach and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith. How can we ask in faith if our faith has never been seen? If our faith has never been brought to the place where we even understand what it is. I, whenever I read that, then I'm thinking like, oh, wait a second. When I ask God, when I come to him and say, God, I need you. I need wisdom. I, I need guidance. I need healing. I need, 
I need you in this moment. There's something about coming to that moment in faith. But how do we know what faith is if we haven't been in the proving grounds? It says, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed. Opposite of faith is doubting. And it says what doubting is, is just like something's being tossed to and fro. Whatever way the water, whatever way the wind's going, I'm going that way. That's not faith. That's just just doing whatever because I actually don't understand what's going on or I don't trust that God has me right here and I'm going to be firmly planted in him. You know, it's one of my tattoo ideas. I show Pastor Tori, and she's like, I don't think I like that. I don't think I like that. But I saw this, this graphic that's, it's, I think it's old. But it, it on it, it's like a little picture, but it said death to doubt. Death to doubt. That's the reason she didn't like it, because she doesn't, it's like, it says death. It's like, yeah, kill that doubt. It's got to be gone. That stuff got to go. Like, we don't want it alive in us, right? It can't be alive. Doubt can't be alive. We have to have faith. The doubt is dead and gone. Faith is alive and well. Faith is what's alive. (laughs) And when we... (laughs) when we walk in that faith, when we ask in faith, there is no wavering. There is no wavering. It says that he gives liberally. Liberally. He gives generously. And without reproach. He doesn't hold it against you. When we come to him and ask for wisdom, we ask for something with faith, and we're standing in this saying, God, this is, I know who you are. I know who you've created me to be. I know where you want me to go. I need your help. I need wisdom. I need strength. I need healing. I need you. It says he gives liberally. He does it. Oh, here's a little bit of that. Here's a little bit for you. Because I've only got enough, you know, to, to pass a little bit around. No. He has unending supplies and he will give liberally and without reproach. Sometimes I I was thinking about that, right? He doesn't hold it against you. He doesn't, you know, he isn't begrudgingly giving you what you're asking for. And I was like, why? Why does it say that? Because that's what we think. We think God's going to hold it against us or somehow going to call us, you know, and be like, hey, you owe me. I'm still upset you haven't paid me back. You know? But it says he gives liberally, abundantly, without holding it against you, without being angry at you because you've asked. So can we come in faith asking in that way? Can we walk through this proving ground, this moment, 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. I'm going to be concluding in just a second. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. For we do not want to be ignorant. And this is Paul in this moment. He goes through a moment like we've been talking about. For we do not want to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength. It was, it was way more than our strength. We were under the weight of this thing. So that we despaired even of life. He says, even to death, we weren't sure we were going to make it through. Like literally, we're like, this is probably the day. This is probably the day. In verse 9, it says, yes, we had the sense of death in ourselves. But look at this. Yes, we had the sense of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. 
So there's something, you're like, he is telling you, like this thing we were going through was the hardest thing ever. We didn't even know if we were going to live through it. We were under the weight of this proving ground, of this trial, of this test that we were going through. And it was just pushing down harder and harder and harder. But it happened. How did he look at it? How did he look at this moment that he went through? This is what he said. See, if we had this sentence of death, like I, I'm pretty sure maybe, you know, I'm pretty sure that this is it, I'm going to die. But it says that we went through that moment, right? This, so that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. It was in order, or this happened that Paul would not rely on himself and his resources, but on God and his, that's what he's telling us. He said all these things, what, hap, what, what was going on in our lives in this way, this trial that we were in, it all happened so that I could come to a place where I'm not trusting in myself, where I'm not leaning on my own understanding, where I'm not trusting my own strength or my own wisdom to get me through, but that I could trust in God who raises the dead. Listen, in this moment, he says, I thought I was going to die. But it brought me to this place saying, it doesn't matter if I die because I know that God even raises the dead. Think about, think about that. And in this, in James, in what Paul's saying here, and Corinthians, it's this, it's this, uh, this thought in this, this understanding that is supposed to bring us to this place of contentment, understanding, joy, and trust and faith in God. That no matter what is happening, we can live like it's not happening. Right? He wants us to be able to say this just like in Psalm. Psalm 73, 25. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and portion forever. But God, my flesh and my heart may fail because it's not strong enough. But the amazing thing is that God, He's the strength of my heart. And He's my portion forever and ever. He's all I need. He's all I want. I got him and nothing else matters. Would you stand with me?